Welcome back. This is Stikers Chats. I'm Alistair Cameron and I am joined by Suzanne from Lemonade. Suzanne, thank you ever so much for joining us today. How are you? I'm doing the best, Alistair. Thank you Excellent. so much for inviting me today. No, rock and roll. So we are at the second day of Digital DNA. Um, awesome startup zone that we have here, which is which is kind of showcasing startups. And I just wanted to talk to you because your experience is obviously in getting that story right for, for startups and making sure that word gets out there in terms of what they're doing. So from a PR angle, what would you suggest a startup does in terms of thinking about their own story and, and maybe obviously what they need to do to kind of get newsworthy in a sense? Absolutely. PR is really fantastic um, to be able to clearly get the word out there and to get your message out and your story out. And I think with startups, most startups have a unique story. They will always have um, a reason for how they've came to fruition. You know, yeah. for myself um, with Lemonade, you know, it was born out of redundancy. Yeah. It's all about, you know, whenever life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And that's just an example of my own story. Yeah. But any startups really I've met, they will always have, they're usually solving a problem. Something has happened that has made that founder begin their entrepreneurial journey with a startup. So I often feel that a good way to start is to think about your why. Think mm -hmm. about why did you create this particular product or why are you doing this particular yeah. service and start there start from the basics think about why did you start this journey and really you might be surprised at yeah. what comes out of that and i've been speaking to a lot of these great companies today and it's just so interesting um yeah. you know the range of backgrounds the reasons that um all of the different services are here um, and I think that's a really good place to start. Yeah. You know, keep it simple. You don't need to overcomplicate things sometimes. Yeah, sometimes as well, like the passion that a founder has, like really comes through when you, you, you're chatting to them and you still need to put it back, obviously past that sometimes, just to find out what is the, what was their pain point, like you mentioned, obviously what was the reason that drove them to do it? Mm -hmm. Like redundancy was my reason as well. So it, it, there is a lot of similarity in that sense with a lot of founders that they have a pain point that they have to go through. Like, my question to you on this is, say you've been in business for four or five years and say my story was redundancy, mm. at what point do you go past that and try and redevelop a story into another mm. angle? Because that can be sometimes quite a hard thing for a startup or a founder to, to consider or to do. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good point, actually. It's a really interesting question. And it's about that sense of continual innovation. So continually thinking about your story. So everyone will have a starting point. Yeah. So we can tell that story happy days, box ticked. We then need to think about where we're going yeah. from there. And it's thinking about things like, so say for example, are you looking at job creation? Have you won any awards? Have you secured investment? Um, have you done a story about kind of, you know, your locality, about where you started, why you started? It's thinking about all of the different angles yeah. um, continually. So have it as a process, bake it into what you do as an entrepreneur. So yes, you do your finances. Yes, you do your admin. Yes, you do your sales. But have a marketing hat on as well where you're continually thinking about stories you're thinking about what are we doing as a company that we can talk about what's of interest and it is those simple yeah. things you know I, I always say anything with facts and figures so if yeah. you can think about investment if you can think about securing funding if you're going for funding if you're doing a pitch if you're involved in a big startup competition you know yeah. all those things are newsworthy and have stories and I think it's often about getting started yeah. excuse the, the pun you yeah. know but it's about just making that step to yeah. start thinking thinking about PR, start thinking about your stories and thinking about the ways that you can put that content out. And like, what would be the right stage or time perhaps for a founder to consider going to a, a PR professional? And maybe, I suppose the other thing is, what should they expect from that PR agency or mm -hmm. professional? Are there things that you would say are the minimum expectations of that relationship between, mm -hmm. the, you know, the founder and the, the PR company, mm -hmm. if that makes sense? Yeah, I feel there's two parts to that question. Mm. So to Sorry, answer, there was a lot of questions <laughs> in that. Order. No, it's Sorry. great. The first part um, about when is the right time. My advice on this is actually to be intuitive about it. And this yeah. is me actually talking from a business owner hat yeah. rather than a PR agency owner hat. Um, just even from speaking to a lot of the guys um, at the event today, the startups here, you know your own business you know what's working for you. So for example, some of the guys I was chatting to today, they're not ready for PR yet. Yep. They're working on their content, they're working on video, they're working on building their websites and they want that cemented and right before they go out with PR. Yep. And I think that for that particular company yep. is the right approach. However, yep. some people might have a story that they want to go out with right now and they're ready to go with it. So my advice on that would be, 
as a business owner and as an entrepreneur, you're going to need to develop that sense of intuition and you're going to need to de develop that ability to cut out the noise, listen to your gut and go with your own instinct. So with PR, it's the exact same and with yeah. any kind of marketing, go with your instinct. So that's kind of the yeah. first part of your question. Good answer. With regard, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> with regards to the second part about that PR um, relationship, mm -hmm. again, it's actually a lot about gut People work with people ultimately, that's what I always mm. say. So whenever you meet a prospective agency, that's gonna be the first thing yeah. is, can you see yourself working with these people? They are delivering you a service. You need to get on with them fundamentally. Yeah. They need to understand you. You need to be able to have a shared passion. They need to be super excited about your product or your service. They need to understand your product service industry. So as a minimum, I would, be going in first of all get a feel for them see if you like them yeah. simple as that yeah. secondly see do they actually have they done their research do they actually know what you do are they asking you the right questions are they taking the time to get to know you yeah. rather than just trying to sell you something mm -hmm. and whenever you've kind of decided that then you can get into the nitty-gritty of costs and what the service package is going to be like what the strategy is going to be but unless you have that sense of we get on Yep. I like you and you like my product and you care about my product, the relationship will never work. Yep. So get those right first and then the client service part piece can really come together from that. Yeah, because like obviously I, I can imagine from the PR, from your perspective, you can't really work on a story unless you kind of feel that it resonates with you as well in some way. Exactly, or that you can, you need to be enthusiastic about it and you mm. need to do your research. Particularly with startups, you know, we would see a lot of, at the event today, for example, SaaS companies, yeah. um, you know, things that are in healthcare, things that are very, very specific and very, very niche. And I'm very wary of people who try to be all things to all men. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. And I think you need to be very careful that you're not engaging with someone who's trying to sell you up the river. So it's very important that if you do work in a niche yeah. industry, that you take your time, do your own research, have a look at who is actually out there that could support you mm -hmm. um, and really make your decision from there. Yeah. And what I love about that piece of advice is in no way are you pitching yourself. No. Which is great because obviously, like you say, you can't, you, you, you can't do everything mm -hmm. and like you can't be for everyone. So it's good That's that you're good. kind of like, you know, that you're, you're showcasing the industry and make, setting those expectations up for anyone. So I think that's great. Um, what would be the, the final thing that you think is the takeaway from this year's DNA when you're here and obviously walking around? Do you feel mm -hmm. like there is a sense of vibe back in the place? Like for me, mm -hmm. it's just great to see people again. I think that's actually my takeaway is that sense of networking and community yeah. and engagement, which is lovely. We've had such a crazy couple of years. Yeah. Um, you know, for me today, I'm actually meeting a lot of clients, people I've talked to for years, for yep. the first time in person, yep. which is crazy. So for me, there's a real sense of community. There's a real sense of engagement. Yep. Um, and it's just fantastic to be in person and to be able to talk to people face oh, to face. Oh man, alive. And obviously like sometimes you see someone, you're like, they were, I didn't think they were six foot seven. <laughs> like, cause all you've seen is that Zoom screen, just isn't it? Zoom screen. Yeah. So. <laughs> Like obviously, people people have said to me, "You look very different to online." <laughs> like, but like, unless you're just looking at someone's head all day, that's understandable, it's isn't it? Definitely. So no, it is great, and obviously, it's just great to see people smiling, having fun, smiling, engaging, uh, yeah, learning yeah. from each other, um, and just talking. I yeah. think it's just there's such there's so much to be said yeah. for that because yeah. we just we've missed it. No happy days. How do we find you on Lemonade? Like, where are you at? Yeah, so Lemonade is on Instagram, yep. um, Lemonade Marketing underscore NI. We're also on LinkedIn, or you can add me, um, Suzanne McEnany, on LinkedIn as well. Perfect. Um, and that's where we are. Yeah, and if you're interested in working with us, we offer PR and yep. marketing. Um, you can email me yep. um, with Suzanne at lemonademarketing.net. Happy days. No, <laughs> thank you so much, Suzanne. Always a pleasure. Oh, thank you. Um, and, and thanks for the support that you offered to our founders that have gone through some of oh, our no founder programs as well. So um, this is Stikers Chats. We'll be back soon with another conversation.